All right, everyone, it's time for a little bit of surmising here. I think that the reason why the cringe fringe leftists want to erase women, and I'll get into the different kinds of the left because they get different opinions on this in all honesty, admittedly. Now, I think they want to erase women and gender in general because they can't get a date. I think that they have, because it's a sausage fest, number one, uh, and there's a visceral dislike I think for, like, you know, modern dating convention, as most people hold it, because they, they simply can't hold up in it. Because they tend to be like, you know, they're either ideological one-trick ponies, so they've only got one subject they talk about, which is leftism, like, you know, how they want to suck off Bernie Sanders' asshole or something. Um, or they're just physically unattractive. Now, a projection fully uh, expected. I expect that there will be leftists who will say, well, look at this dirty hippie talking who can't get laid. Uh, I'm married, so that flies out the window. I'm used to that online. It's rather funny. It's sort of like people used to complain about the fact that I hadn't traveled and therefore my political opinions were meaningless. And now I'm in the Netherlands, and now they say that it's meaningless because I'm no longer in the U.S. So it's like it's a catch-22. People that don't like you will always bitch about you, uh, even if they're completely wrong. And they, in my case, they always are, uh, because my critics tend to be morons. Um, I think that the cringe fringe left, and I'll differentiate them in a moment, predominantly is just unattractive sausage fest males that can't get a date in the normal sense and women by the way can take advantage of them very easily and I see this happening and it's very funny and I actually support them in doing this because they'll come in and they realize like you got this sausage fest of losers that are that all pretend to be male feminists and oh my god my milady and they hold her up in a pedestal and stuff but really they're like sexually they're predators but if you know how to if you know that to be the fact then actually if you're cunning at all uh, you can use them as an ideological cudgel, and you, you don't actually date them. Meanwhile, the, you know, she's looking at, like, probably right-wing males or libertarians or something, uh, but can use the bug boys as, as basically cannon fodder ideologically. I see this happen. I find it hilarious. Now, there are different groups within the left. This only holds true for, like, the 90s and 2000s, like, cringe fringe left. It doesn't hold true for the hippie left. The old guard hippies and, and new wave hippies, in some cases, they, they don't like the state. Um, they, they go out and they do like farm work and shit so they can probably get laid because you know they'll have some muscle mass some skills and stuff they, they, they want to be almost survivalists survivalists plus drugs basically well more drugs uh, well that's there's nothing wrong with that and then you have like the post I'd say 2019 or so militant left which is like leftists who like AR-15s there's nothing wrong with that like you know you're training with your buddies at the paintball range and you got body armor and you know, basically, uh, if, if you had eth ethnic views, you'd have a Confederate flag or a Gadsden flag at that, at that point, depending on your economic uh, proposals. There's nothing wrong with that. You just, yeah, I mean, you're confused by AOC or Bernie Sanders or something, but, you know, you know how to fire a gun. You know, you know, you're probably not 400 pounds. Nothing wrong with it. And then you have the anti-SJW left. And, so, and, you know, some of them have sold out and now pal around with communists, but, you know, uh, by and large, uh, at least you're not pro-censorship. You understand me. You know, you have a sense of humor as opposed to many of the cringe fringers. The problem is if we're looking at especially millennial leftists and some of the Gen Zers, they're all cringe fringers and Starbucks Marxists. Now, a Starbucks Marxist is slightly different. That's specifically from the middle or upper middle class, like the trust fund college or high schoolers. that They go to Starbucks and they'll complain about capitalism being evil and falling apart on their iPad. They'll complain about capitalism being responsible for their problems while sipping a $10 latte. Well, it's just you're a NIMBY hypocrite. Basically, you're going to turn into a neoliberal when you're older anyway. Once, once, If you get a decent job, you're going to become a neoliberal. You're not going to be throwing bricks because you weigh 90 fucking pounds and eat nothing but fucking soy and bug burgers. Uh, so fuck it and fuck you. Uh, the cringe fringe, though, is, is arguably even worse. These are the people that support like censorship and they mob corporations. And by the way... I've got a proposition for you here. You know, you, you get more flack over the target. If you are a true revolutionary, in any meaningful sense, and I don't mean like a taking up arms and fighting an armed revolution, I mean in, in the ideological sense, regardless of anything further, you tend to be attacked by the powers that be. The powers that be in the U.S. and the West are government and corporate. Those are the two main powers that be. Who are they attacking? Are they attacking leftists? I mean in the cringe, for instance, no. The only people they're attacking are the so-called so Nazis, which aren't even Nazis 99% of the time, libertarians, and then like the militant left, or the hippie survivalist left, but they don't attack the cringe fringers. They're the, the cringe fringers just want materialism. 
They want their form of activism is a change.org pe uh, petition and a post on Twitter. And they have their pronouns in their bio. That's the other thing I've noticed. They all seem to be hypersensitive about issues. Like, like the trans thing, I think, is actually a facade, a cloak, a smokescreen for their d dislike of women, their internalized misogyny. I've noticed this. Again, when you have a sausage fest, 90-95% male, comprised mainly of unattractive uh, uh, males that are incapable in, under normal circumstances, under consensual circumstances of getting a date, they're emotionally and socially crippled individuals, um, they're going to internalize that. And so they seek to sort of export it to other people as well. And I think the way in which people that have more right-leaning or traditionalistic views do it tends to be MGTOW. It tends to be like MRA or something. So they'll complain about divorce court, even though most of them have never been married. And, and the left, meanwhile, they won't do that because that's misogynist to them and in the open sense. So they rather they hide that misogyny behind a facade of, I think that gender is completely malleable. I could be a woman too. All I have to do is shoot up some hormones and invert my genitals. Well, that's clearly not the case. It doesn't have anything to do with genetics. You're talking about gender expression, which is malleable, and there's no problem with that, uh, whatever people want to do. But you're seeking to erase the discrete groups. Like, like if you erase woman nest by making it completely malleable, then Amelia Earnhardt being the first woman to fly transatlantic it doesn't matter anymore because gender doesn't matter. She's not even a woman because gender has disappeared entirely. Uh, being a female Olympian, the first uh, woman, you know, being Mary Curie, who cares? Eh, okay, she had a vagina. Well, of course, if surgery, if the surgery had existed back then, maybe she would have had a dick, so she'd be actually, the, a man would have done it. It's completely malleable. You can retroactively apply this to any prior point in time as well. Well, then, what's the difference? Uh, if gender doesn't have any real concrete meaning, then women's rights means nothing. Women's suffrage, you know, the struggle for suffrage means nothing. Susan B. Anthony, ah, fuck her, who cares? Well, there, there's a little bit of a misogyny there, now there, isn't there? I believe that there is. I believe that there's a, re a reason why the soy-faced bug boys can't get a date. And so they internalize and re-internalize that misogyny. It's just that they hide it behind a facade, partially for predatory reasons, hoping to get in with a female that they can actually uh, con into sleeping with them. I think that most of the time it doesn't work. That's about all. Peace out.